Welcome to Destination Utopia. I'm Bunny Williams, and with me is... Rose, it's me. We haven't really got any topics today, just talking about our thoughts for the week, I guess. It was kind of a slow week. Uh, Obama said something about ISIS and the Crusades. Eh, who cares? Oh. Um, well, there was, they did burn somebody. They did burn somebody, I heard. Sure. That that was ISIS. They burnt him in a cage or something mm-hmm. like that. I, 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 wow. I'm not a fan of watching videos like that. You know? Yeah, I know. I had you know, read about it. I haven't had time, very much time. But Yeah. So that's pretty terrible. Definitely the utopia. And it's kind of weird when you think about it. That's like their idea of utopia. They're trying to create a perfect society. Right. So that's really, really interesting. I, I just also try to have a perfect society. I just can't see how you can have a perfect society through oppression. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make any kind of sense. You know, and we don't really have any good representations of what utopia is. Right. And I think people get utopia and dystopia confused. <laughs> I know, they it, say one person's trash is another man's treasure you know it's the same for that utopia is another person's dystopia yeah so i don't know i i I can't see utopia without people being free to do things and create or you know um free to just be atheist and whatever uh well religion certainly causes problems i I, I, mm-hmm. I would think there would still have to be some room for that kind of oh, expression, definitely. you know? Yeah, I think you know, religion is such an intricate you know, part of our whole system. A lot of people's identities, you can't you know, go all Russia and try to outlaw it. Right, exactly. Um, and and, and it, it it seems healthy for there to be um, sub ideologies as long as as mm-hmm. long as they don't well go fucking with each other all the time like they do now. You know? Right? Yeah, it's not competition. I don't get about religion. It's like they're so they just want to convert everybody, but what does it matter to them? Like yeah. I don't know of any religion that has like you know stickers every time you convert somebody. Yeah, like, I don't know why they, they care so much. <laughs> information out there and everybody has free will to pick up on it and convert if they want to. You know, burning people for not agreeing with you or even like just is knocking door to door. Why does it matter so much? Right. I mean if it comes up in casual conversation, you know, mm-hmm. a couple of words, whatever. You know, but then don't make it the kind of religious battles that it winds up becoming mm-hmm. until you just kinda of like, I gotta get away from this person somehow. <laughs> 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 yeah. right yeah you know i, I don't see that's that. always awkward you know but sometimes the, the conversations of spirituality and things like that come up so you know you mm-hmm. can express yourself at you that know, in point. The conversations about spirituality and like that they're usually you know a lot more it's an even conversation nobody's trying to convert anybody it's a discussion mm-hmm. when you get into religion it's more dogma you know this is the right way and you have to do it this way otherwise yeah. you're gonna die yeah exactly and you've got to battle your points i'm not into battling my mm-hmm. points <laughs> you know i mean right, like, you can disagree with me or not that's that's where i kind of feel like we have to get back to uh the old saying of the three things that you do not discuss in polite company is sex, mm-hmm. politics, or religion. You yeah, because any of you causing arguments and fights, but I think, you know, a polite conversation, you, you should be able to have these conversations yeah. and, like, making it all true. Yeah. So I think, you know, ideally, like, as Utopia, we'd be able to talk, you know, about anything. You know, if somebody's offended, you know, have the respect to shut up about it. Mm-hmm. But... I don't know. I don't think that's a good rule, honestly, for myself, because <laughs> I think people need to be talking about that stuff more. Yeah. Well, you know, a- as you point that out, I'm kind of rethinking it myself, but, you know, <laughs> still, it, it would solve a lot of problems. <laughs> shut up but about no, it. Fr- 
free discussion would definitely have to be a part of Utopia. But, mm-hmm. you know, that's it. Discussion. You know, Yeah, discussion, not, not arguments. Yeah, not where baseball bats come out and children get put into uh-huh. ovens and all kinds of strange shit. Yeah, yeah. That comes out of both religion and politics. Mm-hmm. You know, although a good Republican sex scandal is great. Oh, yeah, so satisfying. The Republicans are just such kinky motherfuckers, you know. Democrats, Democrats have so repressed. Democrats have a have a sex scandal, and it's a cigar and a blowjob in the Oval Office. That's some pretty tame <laughs> shit. Get over on the Republican side; they're texting their penises to everybody. They're caught in full S and M gear, getting pissed on and stuff. It's just, it's like oh, okay. Everyone knows that. <laughs> I, it, yeah, I don't know that. That's that's too extreme. Like, why? I, I think that like their sex lives like actually shouldn't matter at all. Honestly, I think that just if Clayton got a blowjob, maybe that's between like him and his yeah. wife and whatever. Yeah, I don't think I was interfering with his role as president. I mean, they do lots of things in his office, right? He probably eats in there. Yeah, o- other countries do not yeah, have those kinds on. of problems. You know. I don't- they- they know if their president has yeah. has a mistress or not, but it's just not a, that yeah. big of a deal. There were there was more than one yeah. French president who had a who had a mistress. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, feel about it. Yeah, I think that's you know, other countries they follow the rule of don't talk about sex politics or really talk about it. So if they're more open about it, then they won't be coming down on politicians for you know doing that stuff. It'll be whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just still find it funny that it would be the Republicans that scream the loudest about something like that, but when they get caught, they get caught like weird. Right. You know, so it's 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 just such hypocrisy, you know. That kind of a thing. So, and, and and quite a few religious leaders too. You know, they have great sex yeah. scandals. Um, so scandalous, like hypocritical. Yeah, it kind of pushes it over the edge. Being just like so insane because such a high level of hypocrisy, like you said. Yeah, I I was trying to think of like movies or anything like that that would like really that was really trying to uh, depict utopia and damn it. Everything's dystopian. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't come up with a single one. Right. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to think of one too, even like shows. Yeah. yeah. Are we just like not optimistic about our future? Like as a society? That's true. Because you know what? I saw this meme. I, I really think it's true. It's a picture of how we envisioned the future, like in the 90s or something. Right. And it was like, you know, nice and high tech, clean, futuristic. And how we envision it now is like apocalyptic. Yeah. Like everything's trashed. Everything's just like an sh- empty shell. Well, it's almost, I, I don't it's almost kind of, that. it's almost kind of cycles because we're, we're getting a lot more that is dark and the future is bleak and all that now. Mm-hmm. And if you think about it, we're kind of in the same place we were in the 60s, where that was a very popular science fiction style as well. Okay. You know, that's, that's where so you have... It's kind of like influence of the Cold War and, like, you know, imminent death and destruction. Yeah. You know, that's where we have, like, Soylent Green or Silent Running or things mm-hmm. like that. These just really dark science fiction movies. Uh huh. You know, of which Soylent Green is just the bleakest. <laughs> Man, that is such a horrible world. <laughs> but I uh, always hear that reference, but I've never seen it. I have to watch it now. Oh, it's a yeah. It really is a must see. You know, and uh, Charlton Heston worked so well with Edward G. Robinson. You know, um, they co-starred against each other, and it was almost like. Mr. Miyagi and the Karate Kid grew up. (laughs) They have that same sort of relationship. 
Um, geez, you know, I mean, even going back to silent film times, Metropolis was just bleak and oppressive, you know, and mm-hmm. all of that. Um, you know, so we don't, we don't dream towards utopia and we don't think about utopia or, or anything else. No, like, and do get like totally put down and you know discouraged you know put down and told you know, you can't do that you need to make money right. not dream mm-hmm. yeah so they're kind of stuck in the cycle of having to make money so that they can't you know put so much time and effort and resources that they want you know, unless they're you know isis and it's really cheap to burn people uh true true a, a bigger a bigger initial investment than just cutting their head off though i would think <laughs> how so well somebody's got to go get gas you know they had to have the cage That's true. you know yeah. this kind of stuff you know and and you know it, w- w- in these days like so so few people smoke anymore it's hard to get a light off of anybody <laughs> you know so, are you talking about a lighter or bumming a cigarette? Uh, getting a lighter, getting a book of matches. I, I, I haven't even. I don't think I've even seen a book of matches in you about have to ten hang years. Hang out with the right people. <laughs> you're in Colorado, so I don't know how you're saying nobody has a lighter. <laughs> well, things in our states may change on that front. Yes, you do have a definite <laughs> point there. Yeah. But before that, oh my God! And let me tell you, that is such a strange feeling for oh. me, because like, like uh-huh. I really thought this ne- this this day would never come. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Thought and, people were gonna smoke forever. And no, well, I'm talking about the marijuana. I sorry, I kind of shifted oh. a little. I, I never thought that this day would come. And you know, growing up my whole life, pretty much, it was like mm-hmm. you know this is hypocritical and this is stupid and there's always been this right. you know but if you don't get wasted it's not every harmless. night no big deal but no god forbid they smoke a joint yeah so it is so strange like i still haven't you know it's been over a year and i still haven't gotten over the feeling of walking into a store asking uh-huh. what they have <laughs> <laughs> They measure out my pot, you know, I put it I, in a bag. <laughs> I haven't gotten used to the whole legality either. Like, I was in my living room, had the blinds and the window open, like, airing out. I you know, smoke some. And for whatever reason, there's, like, two or three out. I don't, they weren't after me. I feel like, it's, I was so paranoid. Like, I couldn't just sit there and smoke in my own fucking house. Yeah. Because they were there, even though they can't do anything, like it's legal and whatever. I just can't get over that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let me tell you, I've been in some seedy places trying to get some dope sometimes. (laughs) So, (laughs) sometimes you drive really far and then it's not even that good. Now, now, now I get it in a bag. Mm -hmm. And if, if the person I was dealing with and I had, had a, Nice conversation, a pleasant conversation while we were doing our transaction. I might get a cookie. Nice. How about that? Oh, special. <laughs> yeah. They do like to give out perks. When I my first moved to California, that is when they opened up all the medical dispensaries. Yeah. And they were giving out good deals too. I had a couple of friends that had prescriptions and they were just go you know, have deals, you know, buy so much, get this one an edible or you know blah 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 it's great times yeah Uh, i do think that this is one step closer to utopia uh but to be a little on the radical side sorry go ahead it's definitely a step for like you said to have the rights of your own body and even like increment more of a way Mm -hmm. but at the same time i i I really kind of think that all drugs should be legalized, you know? Um, mm-hmm. 
and you know, and then we would be better. First off, we won't be filling up the prisons, but that's a whole nother story because the prison is right. a profit making industry now. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> um, putting people into prison for for drug offenses, you know, unless they actually it? hurt somebody, mm-hmm. you know, Which I mean, would if they be hurt- a completely time anyway. Yeah. I mean, prohibition has never worked. We have learned this several times in history now. Why do we keep doing it? People just like control. They like making money off of throwing people in jail, like you said, you know, for doing drugs. And I think, you no, know, there's really bad drugs like meth and heroin, whatever. Yeah. And those should be legal. I agree. The thing is, when you criminalize it and you put them in prison, you can drive them further underground and like out of. You know, the general circle of society. So the right. more you push them for that, the farther they are away from help and being accepted as a person and, you know, kicking the habit. Yeah. Then, like, the only people they have to hang out with are, you know, other druggies. <laughs> only people they want to help them out. Yeah, and if you have, you know, and and I hate to say this word, but once we're comfortable with what we're doing with the marijuana first, you know, it is the gateway then, drug. Then we could do a little bit of regulating. You know, mm-hmm. hopefully we do it sanely that if so we're we're kind of expanding a marijuana dispensary into where they're selling meth or whatever. Okay. Mm-hmm. That they may they they may have to report somebody that they think may be having a problem because they're coming in right, all the yeah. time about meth but i mean maybe you could use it responsibly like if you just need a lot of energy today you know whatever yeah and it goes to some social service worker you know Mm -hmm. like not to the cops but you know to somebody who'll be like okay we we believe you have a problem we need to try every day you're always tweaking you can't be doing that with any substance you can't you know well you can't drink all the time and be okay. You can't do meth all the time. You can't even be stoned all the time and right. be okay. And people are arguing it's that, but uh, that you can be high all good. the time. I don't think it's a good thing. Like it's not necessarily physically unhealthy, but yeah. you know it changes the course of your life in a direction that maybe you don't want to go. I I would love to be high all the time, but yeah, no, I do see that. You, yeah. you know, it's but, it's almost like it's not anymore normal and then it's you know it doesn't matter it, it kind of normals like, out yeah when you're not like intoxicated <laughs> yeah uh-huh. yeah kind of normals out where you don't feel the high very mm-hmm. much anymore yeah and then you have to take a detox break so that you can you know yeah high again i i haven't gotten into you know like smoking before work or anything like that mm-hmm. you know so most of my day is a sober day and it depends on the day whether I'm going to get high or not. But if I'm going to get high, I'm going to stay that way the rest of the night. Yeah, pretty much. You know. No, I've, I've made the mistake. It wasn't my fault. Like, I had a job. I'd been out, you know, for five, two, three years. And it's all pretty routine. And nothing really ever happened. Yeah. People came to work high all the time anyway. So I did. It was miserable. It was a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Had to like deal with people and like give orders. <laughs> so, you know, being stoned to work is just. Yeah. I, I couldn't imagine doing most jobs high, especially, especially mine. I do tech support over the phone. If I was high, you know, I can barely hold it back now. But if I was high, I would definitely be like, okay, okay. Would you shut the fuck up so I can try to help you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when I, I worked today. There was this lady called. And I didn't talk to somebody else did, but I could hear off on their phone. She's like, bah, 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 bah. so yeah. okay. Well, I can't like try to help you. I can't offer solutions or you know tell you any. I know what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> If you get the right amount, if you're just regular people, yeah, you know, being a little stone makes it. But you know, I like drinking at work better. You like drinking at work better? 
Yeah. I worked at one place. They had some beers on tap. And like sometimes they would just like, you know, bubble out and go everywhere. And we'd have like extra beer because it wasn't pouring, right? We'd have to like dump it out. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. So I drink the, the extra beer. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's so much better. Everybody liked me more and I liked everybody else more. <laughs> So I think we all should be allowed to have a beer at work. There's nothing better than a drunken bartender. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so for my training, I I'm not working in a bar. Like I may I may not sell a point. You know, the right. hotel. I have to take alcohol awareness training, and it's online from it's through Serve Safe. So it's like all this stuff. Apparently in Washington state, the bartender is liable if somebody leaves the bar and, you know, gets a, an accident. You know, he gets in trouble, of course, but traces back to the bartender who also can be imprisoned and fined. And like, it's crazy. That's, I, that's obviously ridiculous. You that is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like, and not over... But you can't always tell. And it's trying. I need to be able to tell if they're too drunk to like give them more and stuff. Yeah. So if they're just really good at holding their composure, really good at and they go out and cause an accident, I'm going to go to prison? That's not fair at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for just trying to do your job, you know. Exactly. And you can do your best, you know, not sell any more to like really drunk people. And like and, not always. Yeah. And why do you have to get into this whole like shared responsibility shit? That person's mm-hmm. an adult. They should know what they're drinking. Yeah. Fucking mother. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to a bartender, like give way too much, you know. I, I don't get that law at all. And that should definitely be changed. Yeah. Have you ever read 1984? I watched the movie. No, I read the book. You read the and book? And I watched the movie. Yeah. 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 That is some amazing stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's probably about time for me to read it again. I think I read it in high school, so yeah. it's probably you didn't get yet. I had a really crappy high school education, so anything, any kind of books of any sort of real significance I read after I got out. Oh. And 1984 was one of them, and and Jesus, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, no wonder it, it's such like a textbook on totalitarianism. You know, how did he do that? How did he do that so well? Well, he did kind of work in politics somehow. Mm-hmm. You know, so you know, a lot of his books were politically based. Um. So he must have had some kind of knowledge, and then so from there, a really good guesser. And, no, I think he was a United States things were going. It wasn't a guess. I think he was a really educated analysis. You think he was able to extrapolate out this far? Yes. I mean, because that's yes. pretty amazing. I mean, right now, we have the Forever War. And we have we have uh, like near constant surveillance of the populace. Those were the two big things in 1984. Trying to do that, you know, back in his day, anyway. Like they're, they're trying to get the technological advances to enable it. Mm-hmm. They were pretty much already in perma war before. It's been a continu- continuous thing for decades, right? Uh. Well, I'm really talking about what we have personally been involved in, and we hadn't been in, um, we were involved in, well, we got involved in Iraq in, like, 2003, I think? Mm, I think it was 2001, wasn't it? No. I guess maybe, like, 2000. We took a while to actually get going. It took a couple of years to get that push through, yeah. Uh... Then before that, there was just the other Gulf War ten years previous, mm-hmm. give or take. You know, so there've always been wars, 
you know, but mm -hmm. we haven't always been involved. But now in it's the or Orwell changing the enemy every other month. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's Al-Qaeda, and now it's I ISIS, think. and, you know. There's another one in there, too, somewhere. Well, there's Hezbollah and uh, Hamas. Hamas is the one that we're uh -huh. hearing a lot now because of the problems in Israel, you mm -hmm. know. Uh which has a few of my Jewish friends really upset and feel like people are turning away from Israel. And I, I like totally don't know how to feel about what's going on there. Right. I think it's, there's more than two parties involved. It's not really. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, it's hard. To, Israel against Palestine. Yeah. It's hard to take a people, kick them out of the country and bring in a whole flock of new people and expect those mm -hmm. first people not to be pissed. Right. You know, and like at the same time, like we've done that before, and it wasn't the best of ideas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why are we doing it again? You know, but now it's just like kind of done. You mm -hmm. know, like race relations, we can't take back slavery. You know, right? We we can't we can't now kick the Israelis out of Israel, and what are we going to do with them then? You know. <laughs> like yeah, sorry sorry we did this, Palestine. Let's take these people and you move back in and you the moon, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. You, you know? can do that to people. There's all from um you know, unauthentic, like naturally evolved they've been sliced up by somebody and they slice up people you know they separate people of the same, same cultural identity this same group this is like a lot of shit saying so, you know, they may have been the majority in the region but now they're a minority in each country right. you know what i mean mm -hmm. that's one of the problems with the middle east set by by britain back in the day i think so there's people you know put together told they have to work together and get along that never did before they had you know their stuff so it wasn't voluntary i think that's kind of why there's been a lot of issues as much as we as we've seen you know yeah yeah um so let's try helping out people that have been kind of cool for a while you know, like Iran hasn't really been all that bad. They've been kind of, you know, mm -hmm. they want a bomb and it's kind of hard to blame them. And it's sort of kind of hard <laughs> to figure out what to tell them. You mm -hmm. know, I, 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 I have such mixed feelings about about that situation because they have been flaky mm -hmm. in the past, you know, but right. but India and Pakistan have them. They're pretty fucking flaky, too. You know, um, like about bombing people or not bombing people. Oh yeah, they get into heated fights where they do start talking about chucking bombs at each other every now and then. Mm -hmm. India and Pakistan. Yeah. Oh, they're fucking yeah, they're awful with that. You know, a, a nuclear war can come out of India and Pakistan just like at any time. You know, damn, I didn't even know that. <laughs> you know, and there are still plenty of bombs left. Mm -hmm. Um. Because I'm old-fashioned, and I like to have myself an old-fashioned apocalypse. You know, I'm not, <laughs> into, I'm not into zombie apocalypse. I need mushroom clouds. That's what I was raised on. <laughs> Radioactive zombies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, would have, that would be after you came out of your bomb shelters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like that South Park episode. Cartman, like, puts butters into a bomb shelter and says there's zombies up there. <laughs> so, so, I would have a hard time trusting Iran with a nuclear bomb, but at the same time, other lunatics have them. You know? Okay. Why don't we try and to... Like you said, it's too late to take it back. Like You have to take it from somebody first. Yeah. It's taking. It's... So, you know, maybe we show... Somebody has them all, and it's Maybe we show Iran a little bit of trust and let them grow up a little more as a country. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, it, it's a tough call, but still, we have that forever war going on. Like, 
you know, and and it's and it just keeps serving to keep us in fear. Mm -hmm. You know, and I wonder if if ISIS is going to build to a point where whoever the Republican candidate runs on that. Oh, I bet they will. They're already planning that, I'm sure. But yeah, yeah, totally. Agree. Just keep everybody afraid. Nobody's, you know, questioning. They're just totally like, yeah, you know, watch us all. The NSA needs to you know, be sorting through all the data. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not down for burning people in cages. You know, I'm. In a way. But at the same time, I have a hard time believing that this is not engineered. Mm -hmm. Like, like Dan Quayle. You, you totally don't remember Dan Quayle. Oh, we had a party with Dan Quayle. Does that name sound familiar? No. He was the vice president uh, along with uh, George Bush Sr. Okay. Okay. And he was literally put on the ticket because he was a fairly good looking man and that would get the woman's vote. <laughs> oh, that's fucking stupid. I swear to God. Stupid old stupid lady. Stupid, it worked. <laughs> it's stupid that it worked. It makes me so mad. Yeah. But stereotypes, because it's fucking easy. But Dan Quayle was a moron. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like a Sarah Palin or, you know, Michelle Bachman level moron, <laughs> you know? And mm -hmm. he would, and, and and what I started to notice is that every time this country got into some shit of some sort, Dan would say something stupid. And it got to be like, it, this is like clockwork, you know? <laughs> so we have a major earthquake in San Francisco. The president is going, is going to visit and mm -hmm. Dan Quayle is speaking to a group of school children and he misspells the word potato and it's all over the fucking news. <laughs> what an embarrassment. We invade Grenada and Dan Quayle is visiting in Latin, the Latin American countries because that's really all a vice president does. And he gives, he says in a speech, I wish I studied Latin better in high, in, in better in school so that I would, that I would be more easy for me to speak to the people of Latin America. Hmm. I mean, it doesn't pay off to learn Latin a little bit, like understand like the root words and stuff. But, I don't like that way. But then you start looking at Dan Quayle and you see that this is a man who has a fucking PhD in political science. I think political science degrees are shit. This is... I think if that yeah, is like your still. life... What do you know about anything getting elected and you know creating policies that people will like? And you don't know why they'll like them, I assume. Okay, fair point. But he can't be this but fucking stupid. He probably he cheated. Has to, he has cheated. to have a brain. You would have to have enough of a brain to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So that's where I, but, uh, you know, look into it a little bit. Okay? I'm okay. pretty sure I got this one. But he, that's when I first started realizing that certain things happen in the world that are just smoke screens for other shit. Mm -hmm. Pretty much what the, what the conspiracies conspiracy theory people call the red flags which for them uh -huh. everything has a red flag okay, there's okay they all get lumped in together and that's not fair yeah. just because people think it's a conspiracy doesn't mean there isn't one and then you know all like the really crazy people make a name for everybody that is suspicious of what mm -hmm. the news tells them and I that's think a suspicion really is bad good. pattern yeah I think suspicion you know, research is good. And looking into it and then finding out what's going on is really good. But that conspiracy theory label gets stuck on them and now nothing they say is valid. 
and people will only take information, you know, from the approved sources, which would be like CNN and Forks and shit like that. Right. They're basically, you know, speakers for the government that is, you know, hiding the shit in the first place. Mm-hmm. Well, you have to question these things, but I, I, I don't, I don't know if I've, if I've heard of a, a non-crazy conspiracy person or seen a non-crazy conspiracy theory documentary or anything like that. But see, I'll get a little crazy. I, I will think of some that are not so crazy. Now, there's a list of theories that turned out to be true. I, I believe course, you because really I would think I would think well, I, I would fall in that change, category. Something. something. It was like, let me think of this quote. It's easier to fool somebody than to convince them that they've been fooled. Mm-hmm. And then once like, if you have this one story down this rhetoric and you've you know thought it was true your entire life, everything right. else is gonna sound totally crazy. Like, you know, even in the nineties, the thought that there's like other planets outside the solar system was like so crazy to some people. And now it's like so obvious, like duh, hindsight, of course. There. Yeah. Well, it really wasn't crazy to us. It, it just it just wasn't any. We we did not know of any. And then we mm-hmm. started figuring yeah, out how to con- how we can find them. Farther back, you know, like the sixties. That was a crazy idea, maybe. Yeah, but you know, but as you're questioning everything else, you have to question the conspiracy people too. Oh yeah, definitely. You can't just because that's kind of a binary. They're thinking you have to pick one or the other. Right. right? Um. And frankly, any of them I I see are are crazy, you know, but that does not mean that something is like, is not going on. So here's Mm -hmm. a good example. Here's a good example. Okay. So one of the biggest components of, of modern conspiracy theory is the Bilderberg group. Mm -hmm. Sure. You Mm -hmm. know, the Bilderberg group. Okay. Roughly. It's like three bankers. and. Oh no. It's all the most powerful people in the world. Oh, come, right, yeah. come together in a in a hotel in Switzerland, I believe. The the hotel is called the Bilderberg, and they meet once a year in complete secret. Okay, so that is definitely suspicious. It's definitely a conspiracy because all making plans that nobody else knows about. Right. So that's so, the definition of it. Right, but then you, do you hear conspiracy theorists go on and on, what's going on, and all, all of this, and it's like, you know, you know, stop when you're ahead, you know? <laughs> we need to differentiate to make sure people understand there's definitely when something about facts. Yeah. You know. There's definitely facts. something going on there, and you know what? I don't like it. I don't mm-hmm. like the idea of the most powerful men getting in, getting together in a room alone, anywhere, mm-hmm. ever. That could not be a good thing. <laughs> Right, nobody else is allowed, and yeah, like all that stuff needs to be out in the open, and that's, I think, a utopian society, the information is accessible, yeah. you know, what these world leaders are all planning, you know, for all of us, as if we're cattle, you know what I mean? Maybe we have the right to know what our life is going to be like now that they've made this decision. The, the, the only way you could possibly get me to accept that scenario is if you prove to me beyond a shadow of a doubt that the richest, most powerful men in the world, that all they're doing is playing naked, oily twister for the whole weekend. <laughs> I, I then I believe, you know what? Carry on. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but we know that I am, not true. <laughs> I am behind this. I am behind this. This activity. Uh, all you guys just really blowing off steam in such a bizarre way. I'm down oh, with shoot. that. That's okay. Anything else? Not so okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. But yeah, but then it gets carried on to mm-hmm. to ridiculousness, and I I love watching that stuff because because there's always a point where there is a huge jump in logic that right. I that I think they they don't think anybody's going to notice. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um. You know, so I don't know. I mean, when it comes to the World Trade Center, I, I have a really big problem with three buildings coming straight down. Mm-hmm. I have a big problem with that. 
I don't know what happened. <laughs> You're a crazy conspiracy theorist. You know. But that that does not make any kind of logical sense to me that that would happen. Mm-hmm. You know? Especially a building that wasn't even hit. You know? So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what their excuse was that supposed to be. Uh, something just about it fell because of the surrounding impact, you know, mm-hmm. which, yeah, they aren't okay, but... they, like, built to be, like, fakes and stuff? I, I know it's New York, but still. Well, not as much as California, definitely, but, yeah, they, mm-hmm. they're... They've Actually been sound built, and not fall because stuff is shaking around them. They've been built to withstand airplane crashes because... You know, early on, the Empire State Building was hit by an airplane. I was saying, I didn't even know that. That's perfectly fine. It didn't collapse in on itself. Well, it pretty much just hit the top and knocked the knocked, knocked the top mm-hmm. antenna down. But from there, it was like, you know, if we keep keep building them this high, right. we, we better figure out how they don't get knocked down by airplane. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's common sense. Yeah. But yes, everything should be questioned, but <laughs> there's got to be some kind yeah. of middle ground with conspiracy theory man you know yeah you know there is it just gets drowned out by it and then it gets lost in the false binary and it has to be totally fun it's all by the book what the news says there's lots of people in the middle that they don't get noticed because the argument is always those are the talking points now, let's chuck this out. Do you think that it is possible that somebody like David Icke or Alex Jones are in and of themselves the red flag? Like, something happens. Right. Something happens. We need to get everybody's eyes on something else. Mm-hmm. Here's what you guys Probably need to Alex say. Jones, because he's so loud and obnoxious. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Like, I don't know, because nobody really pays attention to him. Like, he's, you know, he's off this other realm of shit. Yeah. But you know what? I saw. Well, he's the one who started the whole uh, no vaccination thing. Oh, did he? I thought that was like a bunch of like parents with autistic kids. I am pretty sure if we look into it, we will find out that he riled them oh. up. I think there's a middle ground with vaccinations. There should be eradicating diseases, but I'm not going right. to get like a flu shot every year. That's just too much. There's a limit to how much we should. I think. I know I'm not a scientist or a researcher. Right. I believe people should be in there. I am not comfortable with. Up evangelists. I am not comfortable with something that I, that I heard this week that. Um, we were going to arrest people for not vaccinating their children? Yeah, that's not right. I, you know, this is the whole where the the country, this country always gets into throwing the baby with the bathwater. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Get your children vaccinated. Please. Okay? Get your children vaccinated. But you know what? Here's the here's the perfect opportunity for us to thin out the fucking herd. You know? Right. Let's not stop them from being stupid. Let them be as stupid as they want to be. They're stupid, you know. Well, look at the genes they're coming from. What kind of a shot do they have? Hey now. Hey now. I think I'm smart enough. (laughs) What? What? You what side are you coming down? How did this come about you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think genes have you know, everything to do with intelligence. I mean, a lot, but I mean, developing, lots of stuff has to do with it. I think smart people can come from. Now I know what you're talking about because I wrote. Re- vice versa. You know what? Dumb, smart people can have dumb kids. I, I remember I talked to your mother once. <laughs> you win that point. <laughs> Thank you. 
but still, people should be free you know to be how morons. Frame this in and if nature, and point, if, but. yeah, if if that's their choice to not vaccinate, I, I don't think that we should be locking them up for it. You know, mm. just ha- how no. Christian that's, scientists, that's bit, you know, a no. what? Not vaccinating or some measles like all over the prison. There's, is there? No, if, if people for not being vaccinated, if they're all like diseased, yeah, then disease is more rampant, like in prisons, all up in there. Mm-hmm. And and since you yeah. mentioned that, since you mentioned that, and I, I don't think it's really something to discuss on the show, but Gwyneth Paltrow steams her vagina. You know what? I I would never like offer up this information. I'm gonna try that because that sounds really nice. I read about it. It sounds really nice. I have just well, I just have a problem with Gwyneth Paltrow. I find her a very <laughs> annoying kind of person. Uh, and, and she says that there is one in particular that is slimming. All that stuff. How much crud does? When does Paltrow have to have up in her that a steam cleaning makes her lose weight? <laughs> I mean, there's lots of inflammation that goes on in there. Yeah. If you relax it all, like, you know, it gets all angry and pissed off and irritated. <laughs> right now, I read about it. It's- it's not supposed to like go up in there and like wow, like it brings blood flow, you know, to your area, which brings right. it to your uterus, which makes that feel better and gets, you know, the crap out. Yeah. But but when it's Paltro herself, she is just she's she's Sarah Palin levels of, of stupid. Um I, I never followed her. I don't really like pay attention. She, I saw her in Stardust, I think. That was that was a good movie. That was a pretty good movie, yeah. Um, she recently had her conscious uncoupling with her boyfriend because, you know, people live longer now and they really shouldn't be with the same person for all that time. You know, mm-hmm. that's it. Uh, she has said yeah, I that, think it was that point. she has said that you should not put on suntan lotion because it's the sun. It's natural. It won't hurt you. Mm. Okay. In Ireland, and you're really white. That's you're living in LA, and you're really white. That's not. <laughs> so, um, but I still think I would like to take goofy celebrities into Utopia with us, because they're <laughs> they're really kind of entertaining, you know. That's their whole point. Yeah. Like I, I take no job with Paltrow and um. Yeah. I loved Michael Jackson until the stories about the children started coming up. You know, mm-hmm. as long as he was laying in his hyperbaric chamber with his pet chimp monkey bubbles. <laughs> Live forever, Michael. Keep giving me this stuff on a on a regular mm-hmm. basis. What are you doing today? <laughs> um, if only Michael Jackson could have had Twitter. Oh my yeah (laughs) (laughs) oh so what else happened this week it seemed just really slow and kind of dull this week yeah i I was i was weak because i didn't have my normal lazy time yeah um no i i saw some really cool places in seattle Actually, hung out with my cousin for the, since I was like fucking eleven. Hung out with Skyler in Seattle. Yeah, show me down a little bit. That was cool. I was really happy to see my cousin again. Cool. That's not really related, you know. In Utopia, of course, we'd have the family that we like around all the time. <laughs> Unless they don't want to, so. Unless they don't want to, yeah, you know, personal, you know, voluntary decisions. 
So I think we just have to become more accepting in Utopia, mm -hmm. you know, of yeah. what other people are feeling. And that's going to be... understanding. Yeah, and that's going to be hard, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't I don't think we're used to that, and I don't think we're, we've ever been used right. to that. I think this is a, almost like a new... Like that's kind of a cultural thing. I think like you know, we have you know, it's always about us in America. It's you know about us all the time. Right. And the language that people use, like everything, how it relates to them. Right. Yeah. So I think this like is that. probably going to need kind of a... different goals. I think different societies have like different areas that they need to work on. Yeah. You know, to get to a utopia. Yeah. So kind of, you know, what other they might need to work on to all get to, you know, if it were possible, a collective utopia, of course, all on the planet. Well, step one, let's stop killing each other. Let's just, let's just work on that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Let's get the basics first, baby yeah. steps. Feed the hungry, you know, get people ho homes who want them, you know? Mm -hmm. I think there's whole system that has to be addressed like why is there hungry people yeah you can't just give them food that doesn't fix the problem no. in some way because there's something that's putting them down mm -hmm. yeah and it could be a whole lot of things it, it could be you know maybe somebody has a criminal record so they can't get a job so they're homeless you know and it's only because they were smoking weed <laughs> yes <laughs> uh God, I can't believe how how prison has got to be such a big business. That that I I can't I can't see how a sane culture could allow such a thing. That idea is so insane. I was watching Stargate Atlantis. Have you seen that show? I never really watched it. I know the show you're talking about, though. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's a good show. I really love sci-fi. Aliens hold the wraith, and basically they prey on humans. And Galaxy, like there's a lot of planets populated, basically, and there's just as a utopian society. No, it's the planet it has utopia, and on this planet, that's where the Stargate is, and that's where the Wraith Islands. Where they put the, all their prisoners. So right. Wraith leave the rest of the planet alone. This kind of started. You know, the Wraith weren't getting. People, because there weren't enough criminals, it's such a perfect society. They started putting more and more pettier and pettier crimes into the island. Yeah. I'm not sure why what you said kind of related. Well, uh, well I, think I think it. I think it is related because some somebody's getting something out of it. You know. Mm -hmm. So the so rates are getting food. You have to try not to tread in other people just to get what you want. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. And even if just for the good of you know all society, you know whatever, the means don't justify the ends. Yeah, and, and be more supportive of each other as well. You know, try to see. A community grow instead of just just a single person, right? No, but not, not sacrifice people for the benefit of it. How I I can't see mm -hmm. how how a, a rational society can say something like it's it's okay for people to make a profit over other people going to jail. Mm hmm. How does that sound like a smart idea to anybody? Well, if they are invested, it's a really smart idea. <laughs> True. You know, but yeah, sooner or later we're going to get down to more and more petty crimes and mm -hmm. we will all be we will all be in jail. Oh, and New York is trying to pass a law that that any kind of protest would be considered resistance and be a felony. Mm hmm. Yeah. Or something like that. Something really. First, they were talking about using machine guns on protesters. I read about that. 
No, at the same time, there was something, legislation somewhere, they wanted to make it illegal for civilians to have body armor, like bulletproof vests and stuff like that. Yeah. So they're talking about guns to use on protesters and not allow the protesters to legalize themselves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's all fucked up. I mean, how many more years do you think until people the government shooting them like on the streets how many years until that happens before the government is just shooting people on the streets yeah before uh, you know they're shooting are allowed to have body armor with machine guns yeah uh jeez depends on it depends on what happens this next coming election I have no idea. You know, Are you think one one president will be better than the other? Take a, a slightly better direction. I, don't, I think they'll have the same. I don't think I don't think the Republicans have a prayer of putting up anybody sane, which I think is <laughs> which is I, I think is bizarre. Them before you know, I, I like the closest they're coming up to is is Jeb Bush, and it's like really. I mean, I don't think so man. What is this? Is this the two controlling families? Yeah. We have yeah, the Bushes on one nice. side and the Clintons on the other? <laughs> yeah, it's it's becoming very dynastic, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, don't you think that's suspicious? Like Terribly suspicious. Type of way. Terribly suspicious. You know, now and, you're a nut conspiracy theorist. And and what is what is wrong with the Republican Party that they cannot pull a, a decent politician out of all Republicans somewhere? Must mean that you can't be decent Republican. It's just they're at odds. You know, I mean, how how much, how many re registered Republican voters are there? Any one of them can be a candidate. Well, I have like a few family members, and, like friends, and like they'll like Republican shit on Facebook. Yeah. And well, a certain type of people, like these are old. I can't really fault them because you know they're really old. They're like elderly. Uh -huh. That's the thing. Like the younger people. I mean, G getting old yeah. is tough because it does. You do have a tendency to fall back to old ways of thinking, you know. Mm -hmm. And it comes up with me fairly often, where you know I, I'll make a racist comment or a, a homophobic Aww. comment or something like that. You know, it it happens. It's wrong, you know. <laughs> But I'm old. Get yeah, off my lawn. Uh, like, to comment about the news. I was like, oh, Grandpa. <laughs> it's not nice. I can't really mm -hmm. I can't say anything. What? I'm not going to say anything to you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and thank God we're not going to try to get this recording out to as many people as we can, you know? So, <laughs> my secret's safe. Way too much has been revealed about my family. Yeah. I I just feel like what I feel about that is like nobody's a racist anymore. How did that happen? And you know what? A lot of them, I'm not leaving them. You know, so Are people racist. Yeah. So you know, just let's try to be a little bit more honest about that. You know, so that we can figure out what it is we need to do about that. You know. Like not so much kind of outward aggressive racism. I'm sure it still exists, but it's more kind of covert, it's kind of you know, thought patterns that we have. We don't really know that they're there. It's right. Social fact, you know, it's just kind of the way things are, and it's just you know what it is. Mm -hmm. We don't notice it, and it's hard to address because it's so formless. Yeah. And it's things like, you know, you act, you make this comment and you don't, I mean, it just happens. It's the way that, you know, people talk. 
talked and they've always talked and it just is. Mm-hmm. So change it. Yeah. That's why I agreed with Oprah's statement that certain things will not change until our de- generation dies off. Mm-hmm. You know, because whereas we may try to be different, we have been raised in a completely different world. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, raised on racist Bugs Bunny and Walt Disney cartoons. <laughs> you know, so where, where you're kind of getting it pumped into you. Uh-huh. O- yeah, almost all the time. Right your brain, like your little pink brain when you're a kid. Yeah. You, you, you know, it, it, and on television, you would have your white shows and your black shows, you know? I still kind of like that. I don't think it's wrong to have BET. Um, well, not having cable, I don't really watch BET, so I... I Hold on one minute. Sure. Yeah. All right. Tell him that I am on the phone. I'll call him when I'm done. Thank you. So, yo, yeah, races and BET. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so is Black Entertainment Entertainment Network. That's that's totally. F- but it's, it's. I don't think it's wrong to. You know, have cultural differences. That's what it is. Yeah. It's wrong to go on that and say they're lesser because they have this difference. And a lot of people get confused about that. Yeah. And here's a, a kind of thing that gets really controversial in, in, in movie circles that some characters and some franchises and things like that are becoming black characters when they've been tra- tra- traditionally white characters. Um, mm-hmm. Johnny Storm in the new Fantastic Four movie is going to be black, and news had come out with that really early, and people threw kind of a hissy fit. I mm-hmm. have heard recently that they were thinking about possibly the next James Bond being black, and people mm-hmm. are having tons of fun with that conversation. I find that. I don't care when it's characters that I am not emotionally invested in. I don't like James Bond. He could be Chinese. I don't care. <laughs> well, he's already had so many different char- character already. Like that is like such a non-issue to me. Yeah. Like um, if it was supposed to be like the same, if it wasn't the way it was, and like we had somebody that's not changing in some show and the actor died or gave up whatever we still need the character and then we make it a character doesn't an actor doesn't look anything like the other actor then that's yeah. not right like obviously you can't switch in a black person for a white character that's been a white character in this one show you know what i mean yeah the only but, way that has ever worked in like television or something like that is when you make a when you make a different character who's going to fill the same type of role and then you make him drastically different from the original character. That's really the only way that's kind of worked in television or anything like that. And we had a couple of instances in MASH, the television show MASH, where they did that very successfully. Okay. You know, but because the character that was leaving, like we originally had McLean Stevens running the camp, comedian he was, you know, and he was goofy and, you know. You could see why the camp was a mess, you know, because he was uh-huh. in charge. And then they swapped him out for Colonel Potter, who was a by-the-books kind of military guy. You have a mm-hmm. character who's fulfilling the same role that they need, but going completely different. Right. You know, so. I don't... You know, I think they were really good actor. That's not fucked up because he's black. He's... if role well that's the only the only issue is if he's terrible based personality yeah. which of course they would yeah but i think i might have a problem if captain kirk became black because i have captain more of emotional kirk. i have more of a, of an emotional attachment to him as a character okay. captain is actors has he what has Captain Kirk ever had a change of actors? Uh, well, not really. Just coming up to this franchise. 
Mm. You know, where they changed it to the young dude. Right. You know, other than that, William Shatner was always Captain Kirk, you know. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know, because that's one of the things it hasn't changed actors. Yeah. As like James Bond is this it's just keeps going, but it's always a different I think it's a totally different situation from Star Trek. Yeah. But let's you know I don't know I just don't know so much about retrofitting older characters as, you know, mm-hmm. let's come up with new stuff. You know, I've I've read I've gone through a couple of my scripts and thinking to myself, you know, there's not a reason for this person to be any particular color. You know. Mm-hmm. Doesn't really doesn't really matter. So somebody fund me so I can make a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I could give more black actors a chance, you know. Mm-hmm. Um how would you feel? black doctor and doctor who a black doctor and doctor who uh uh-huh. i would rather see a woman i would rather see a more dramatic yeah. change i would yeah. not have a problem with a with a black doctor who you, you you might have a really big point there that the character changes all the time because i certainly love doctor who a whole lot more than i hmm. love um james bond you know oh yeah definitely i liked i like james bond when it was roger moore and it was really stupid that's when I like <laughs> James Bond, <laughs> you know, um, a black doctor who, I I don't see any kind of a problem with that at all. You know, not for me anyway, yes. I would rather yeah. see a woman. I think we've seen some kind of good examples. Really interesting. I think we've seen some really good examples of, um, like river song. She, you know, she totally could have spun off into her own series. I thought, and she, would make a good doctor mm-hmm. except that you know she she's already a, doctor, a character she, she's not a gallifreyan right is she well don't don't spoil it well what i want to see I is a spin-off no, da, 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 da. i want to see a spin-off of the doctor's daughter i always thought that too yeah uh-huh i thought that yeah, was i thought perfect. she was gonna come back in the series at some point because she like rocketed off she's not dead but she no. hasn't come back yet. Oh, I'm still waiting. Yeah, I really Is thought she, that it was going to be won't... a good idea, too. Uh-huh. Ugh. Yeah. I really miss David Tennant. David Tennant, he, so far yeah. from this new run, he was my favorite. I did not care for the original series. You know? No, I started watching like it. Tom Baker. Yeah. I've seen a little bit of the very first one, and as soon as I started seeing, got, the, got to the episodes in color, like, it broke and i couldn't watch it anymore so i've only seen like the new the new doctor who's yeah yeah but i think you know having a female doctor that would be a really it could be a really different dynamic it would be really interesting kind of explore different things she could meet up with river song and you know that would be great Mm -hmm. i'd like to see that i would so cast shauna (laughs) i totally (laughs) would that that almost happened because I have a friend here who was building a TARDIS in his yard, and oh then there was a time when okay. she was talking talking about coming out for a little while. Oh my god! Why and didn't that happen? That needs to happen. He he eventually had to sell it because of his girlfriend or something. Blah blah blah. Well, I don't know. Should have dumped her because she's so <laughs> against Doctor Who. Yeah, but oh my god, I could so see her in that role. She would have been brilliant Mm -hmm. so so i would absolutely love to see a a female doctor i i would like to see a lot more strong female characters and there are a lot of strong female characters in my writing um Mm -hmm. doctor who does a good job like rose was amazing martha is badass donna too even who's who's your favorite Uh, rose or martha rose and martha nah i'm Mm -hmm. all about donna i was I, i Donna, 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 I, I, I hated her in the first episode she appeared. Like, she was right. the most like, annoying so creature I had ever seen in my <laughs> life. But, but with the whole, you know, sexual tension between Rose and Martha and all that, I, right. I, I just fell in love with Donna for just yeah. not being in Donna impressed. was a good break for that. Yeah. 
Yeah. She was just not like impressed with the doctor at all. <laughs> yeah. And my... I didn't like her play. Like, I feel the same way you did. The first episode was just awful. And she really grows on you, but she's still so annoying. Yeah. My favorite right. line from her it's... is just, what do you mean it doesn't do wood? <laughs> <laughs> Sonic screwdriver. <laughs> it doesn't work on wood. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I, I am thinking we should probably wrap up. It sounded like you have a phone call to make. Jeannie's sitting here all lonely all this time. So oh, sorry, Jean. <laughs> she can't hear you because I got to wear the headphones. Uh, um, this one well, is going to have. This one is going to have much better sound quality now that I've had some more time to practice. <laughs> oh, good. The second you half. Can edit out stuff and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, I probably wouldn't though. The second, right, they have... the wow, second half of the Pope yeah. on on film sounds excellent. So this one should yeah. sound great all the way through. All right. Okay, so uh, you can find us in the iTunes store. Uh, Search Undead Cow, all one word, and that would bring up all the shows from Undead Cow Studios. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Destination Utopia. You can email us at utopia at undeadcow.com. Or you can join our discussion group on Facebook. Search for Destination Utopia. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And Rosemead, see you in Utopia. See you in Utopia. <laughs>